Frank County, Mayor of the City of Des Moines, Iowa, USA, we have committed to the Compact of Mayors. Well, for all of us, it, it presents itself a little differently. We're in the Midwest, central part of the United States, and uh, we see a lot of extreme weather situations and conditions. It creates flooding. Uh, it creates massive amount of runoff from our agricultural areas. Iowa is a huge uh, ag state. We're the number one in corn and soybeans and hogs and, and uh, chickens and, and a number of other livestock products very important to us. But uh, it, it also, with the extreme events, is causing a lot of runoff, a lot of chemicals in the water, so we're seeing uh, huge issues around uh, the, the healthy waters that, that we need to supply to our citizens. Uh, we're seeing uh, uh, flooding events that are occurring way more frequently than ever. I mean, in 2010, for instance, we had three near 500 year flood events that had happened in the same year. Uh, you know, those kinds of consequences is what we see, and it impacts the livelihood, certainly, of the ag sector. It, uh, it threatens the, the buildings and the businesses that are in Des Moines, our, our capital city of our state, and uh, we're, we're worried about the future. What does it mean, not only for today, but how do we prepare so that our kids and our grandkids and our great-grandkids have a, a future and, and a livelihood that, that they can count on? Well, uh, the city of Des Moines, we feel like we need to lead by example. We've expanded our trail system, give people more multimodal ways to move around the city, whether it's on bikes or walking or jogging, and, and which uh, lowers the, the pollution of, in the um, CO2 coming out of cars, single occupant vehicles. Uh, up to 300 miles worth of trails in, in our metropolitan area. We have a... Uh, um, an initiative where we're looking at lead buildings and uh, so leadership and energy environmental design. Uh, we not only do it in our own system and the city has lead platinum buildings in our own system but we've encouraged and partnered with our private sector where they are now uh, in some of their new headquarters buildings and uh, repurposing of some of their old buildings moving to that same standard. Uh, we, so we have seen a 15 percent reduction in uh, CO2 through our, our work and, and energy consumption. However, uh, one of the, I think, biggest things that's happened for Des Moines and for Iowa in, in our area is we worked with our utility provider uh, who is 10 years ago had, was coal and gas in a little bit of, of nuclear energy to power the electricity for, for Iowa. And uh, they have today uh, switched to 40% wind, which is huge. And uh, they are um, really moving forward on it and they've produced, just uh, purchased actually, a huge uh, wind energy, uh, more capacity in that area, and also they've moved into solar. Well, you'd always like to see an expansion. You know, an awful lot of the people uh, who would like to do the most sometimes are the least able to, to, to do it. So I'm talking about homeowners. And in our city, which is an older city, probably 70% of the housing stock is over 50 years old. So, you know, a lot of those people that are living in those older houses, uh, they're not very energy efficient. They've got furnaces in them that are 30, 40, 50 years old that are, you know, have efficiency of the 50% to 60% efficient and they could move up to 80 to 90, but they need to have a way to do that. So we're constantly working with uh, financers, uh, with schemes uh, um, to help people buy down interest rates uh, uh, if they will take the money that they use uh, on, the, on that increase to improve the efficiency of their homes. Uh, we're trying to all kinds of different schemes to let even the, the least able of people to, to do it and, and uh, to make their, their homes safer, more energy efficient, 
and healthier. And uh, so that's working at the lowest level and we already have those, those programs that we're working with the businesses to do what they can. So we're working at every level, at the government level, at the business level, at the residential level to try to help everybody in our city to move forward to achieve uh, you know, our ambitions. Uh, hopefully, I'd love for Des Moines to be a net zero uh, city, but uh, on the other hand, uh, we're looking for 40%, 50%, and 80% and, uh, reductions, hopefully by the 2040 year. Well, individually, I think uh, mayors are doing a great job in the places, especially the ones that are engaged in it. I think the, the effort here is to get more local government uh, people and state uh, people, at least in the United States, to understand the necessity and why we need to do this and uh, not only to, to achieve the efficiencies and lower the greenhouse gases and, and hopefully lower our risk uh, of the hugely unfortunate uh, effects and consequences of, of climate change. And, uh, but to hand off our best ideas, best policies, uh, uh, share through a, what I would call, uh, been framed a number of different ways as we've listened to the various speakers today, but I would call it legitimate larceny. We go out and we look at what everyone else is doing in a good idea that uh, whether it's in, in Houston or Boston or Beijing, if they are coming up with good ideas, let's try to implement them in Des Moines if it's appropriate. And if we've got some good ideas, let's share with them and let's open it up to all the mayors, all the cities, not only in the U.S. and China, but around the world.